I'm going to show you how to very simply store data on Roblox using a data store service. So firstly, you need to create a variable for the data store service, which will do just like this. And once you've got the data store service, we need to actually create a data store for our game. Now you can have many, you can have as many data stores as you like. So I'm just going to create a variable for this by saying data store service, get data store, and you have to give it a name. So I can call it my data store one. If you wanted to wipe, well not wipe, but if you wanted to reset everybody's data, you could just increment this value to two and it will store data in a different data store. So we'll just keep it as my data store, you know, whatever you want basically. And then what you have to do in order to set some data is you need to have a key and you need to have a value. So the value is obviously whatever value you want to store. So it could be the number of coins you have or the number of XP or it could be the name of the pet that you have got equipped. It could be any any data, right? It could be a table, it could be a string, it could be a number, it could be any any data really. Uh, you Although you can't store things like vector three values, um, things like that. It has to be quite basic data forms. So tables, strings, numbers, and true or false values. That's basically what you can store in a data store. So you've got pretty, you know, pretty good scope of what you can save. Um, so that's the value. So, so that's the actual data. But if we were saving data for loads of players, we wouldn't know whose data it actually is. You know, if we had all these different values, you know, um, millions and millions of these values, if you had millions of players, you don't know whose data you're dealing with. So what's the point in saving data if you don't know who it belongs to? Well, that's where the key comes in. And the key is like an identifier or some kind of tag that just goes along and is stored hand in hand with that data, with those values, to say who it belongs to. And we, it, it needs to be unique for every single player. Otherwise, we would have players who have the same data. So we need some kind of identifier, some some kind of you know piece of data that is unique to every, every player. It's different for every single player, almost like a fingerprint to identify a player's data. And luckily, what we can use for that is their user ID. So every user on Roblox has a user ID. And if you're wondering how you can find that, well, just go to your Roblox profile and you will find that we all have a user ID. In fact, you can see here is mine, okay, uh, 149430069, that's my user ID. So by using a player's ID, we can um, separate and distinguish their data from somebody else's. So it would end up looking like this. So you'd have your ID and it corresponds to your data. And then every other player would also have their own ID you know, so we you know these would be three separate players, but since they have different IDs, if we wanted to look up my data, we could just look for my user ID and it would correspond to my data. So let me show you how this works. So we have the key, we have the value. So how do we set somebody's data? Well, you see, so you get your data store, which we've just set as a variable here, and you say colon set async. And set async lets you set a value to a particular key. So let's firstly provide the key. Now this will be my Roblox user ID and then we'll have a comma and now we can actually store our data. So I could set it to a table and in this table we could have coins equals 50, XP equals zero, you know, uh, and we, we could, you could have even more table. You could have a table to store all of your pets. You could have a daily login streak, you know, um, you could store all your data in here and then it would go up to the data store. So if we were to click on run, uh, oh, we need to publish the game. So if we click on stop and we go to file and publish, okay, I'm just going to publish the game here. And then I'm going to go to game settings. I'm going to click on security and I'm going to enable studio access to API services. Click on save and then click on run. And what will, you can't see anything that's happened. Nothing has happened in the output, but our data store request will have gone through. And a really easy way to check this is by going to plugins 
and getting the data store editor by Slightnik. Okay, you can find this. I'll leave a link in the description. I think it costs Robux, um, so you don't have to get it, but I'm just going to use it to prove that our data has been saved here. So I'm going to connect to my data store. I need the name of my data store, which we set as my data store. And again, this is per place. Okay, so this won't be uh, sh saved between Roblox games. It's only for this one place. So we now need to look for our key, which is going to be 14943069, because that's my user ID. And the keys are always strings. Whilst this is a number, it has to be a string. So we have to wrap it in speech marks. And you can see, look, my data is there. Um, it's We've saved the, the coins, login streak, pets, and XP. So it is there. The next question is how do we actually get this data? So what if you want to get someone's data? Well, it's very, very similar. We will just say get async in this instance, and we only need to provide the key. We don't need to provide any other data because we're getting, not setting. Uh, and this should be data store, my bad. And so we could then print data store get async, and this should print the table that we've just saved, which it's just done. So that is how you set and get data. However, there's a few things we still need to go over. Now, because this get async returns the data, we can actually set it as a variable. Okay, so you might want to do something with this data later on. Perhaps you want to, you know, print a specific value, such as data dot daily login streak, and that will print out one. Okay, there you go. Um, but there's a few things we need to actually look at before we go forwards. Now, firstly, we're only setting data for a specific player here, right? Because we've provided my user ID. How would we do this for any player who joins the game? Well, what we need to do is we need to firstly wrap this in a player added function like this. Okay. And we now have access to a player that will join the game. So we'll take this code and instead, and we'll put it in our player added event. And instead of giving the user ID here directly as mine, we'll say player dot user ID. But because this is a number, we need to convert it to a string. So we'll put it in brackets and we'll write to string. And now for every player that joins the game, they're going to have this template data stored to the data store under their user ID. And the next thing we need to do is we need to actually put this in a p call. Now because this is an API call, we're, we're making a request to Roblox's servers to set someone's data, there's a chance that it could go wrong. So we are going to wrap this in a p call. And you say p call, and then in brackets, you have a function like this. And you need to have a closing bracket on the end of it. And what this will do is because it's now wrapped in a p call, if something goes wrong, for example, for example, if Roblox's servers go down, this isn't going to break our script. It's not going to throw an error. Okay. And this, you know, this is quite common because Roblox can have outages, which means that their servers go down, you can't access data stores. And so we wouldn't want to break our script and stop it from running if that was to happen. But by wrapping it in a p call, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't throw an error that would uh, that would stop the script from running. So we've now set a player's data, a template data when they uh, join the game. But what would happen here is every time they rejoin the game, it would overwrite their data. So we only want to do this if they're a new player. So how do we check to see if they're a new player? How do we know if they haven't played the game before? Well, we could we could try and make a request to the data store to say, has this player played before? So we could say local data equals data store get async to string player dot user ID. And if data is nil, then we will set the player's data to this template. And I'm actually going to move this table outside of the uh, set async. I'm just going to put it at the top of our script. And this can be the template data file. Okay. So if the player doesn't have any data, then we will just set the data to be the template. Actually, no, we shouldn't do that. What we'll do is we will set a sync like this. Okay, and then then what we'll do is down here, 
perhaps you have some data that you want to load, for example, their coins. Right? You could then say in the else down here, uh, if the data is, is, is there, it's loaded obviously, so you could print uh, data.xp, you could print data.coins, you know. Uh, but if they are a new player, then we will say data equals, and you're going to make a deep, I'm going to make a deep copy of a table. And what that means is, I want to create a clone of this table, of this template, without any relation to it. If I was to say data equals template, then this could get a little bit messy because there would still be a link between this table and the data. So if I made any changes to it, it might alter the, the template table. I'm not too sure on this, but what I like to do for safety is I just like to set it as a deep copy. So it's a completely separate, um, unrelated table to the template here. Uh, and then this can actually get moved out of the if statement. All right, okay, this should, this should work well. So let me just explain what I've done. So if the player has no data, we are going to set their data variable to be a completely fresh copy of the template uh, rather than a, a link to this specific template variable. And then we're setting that to their data store. And then outside of this if statement, by the time we get to here, the player will have some data, whether it's the data that's been loaded from the data store or the data from the template table. So we can do whatever we want with their data. If they, you know, if you have some leader stats, you could set their leader stats to these values. Uh, if you wanted to implement increment their login streak, you could do that. But every time you alter their data table, you'll need to set a sync. Okay. So if I was to later on, if I was to increment their coins, I would need to always call set async. Now this is a very, very basic implementation of data store. And there's many different ways you can do it. Um, for example, you could use a, uh, a framework such as the profile service or data store two. The, the purpose of this video was more so to teach you how get async and set async works. This isn't necessarily how you would do it if you had a, a, a big game, for example. Um, but it's just meant to teach you how keys work, values work and data store in general. So, um, that, that's it basically. Let me know if you found it useful, if you have any more uh, ideas for videos and uh, I'll see you in the next one.